Welcome to Newsbreak on KTU Radio. The name is Benedicta Yao Hinawa Samoa, but then you can just call me Adicta Guda. Today happens to be the 14th of February 2024. It is Valentine's Day, but then today's Valentine's Day has taken a twist. The President of the Republic of Ghana, in the person of His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufu Ado, has relayed some ministers and deputy ministers of their positions or portfolios in government. We have the finance minister being relieved, the information minister being relieved, and also the health minister, among others. Right here, I've got with me Dr. Jamal, who happens to be an economics and senior lecturer of Koforidia Technical University. And I want to know if he was a bit surprised with the reshuffling and uh, if also he has anything at all to say about the reshuffling. All right, so good morning. Good morning, sir. Let me say hi to our cherished listeners. Mm. This has been one of an important radio station you can find in the East. Yeah. And uh, today being a, a Valentine's Day, a day of love, this is the first time I'm speaking to people with respect to issues about national development yeah. and public policy advocacy. If you look at the role of ministers in our nation building and national development, you agree with me that ministers have a larger significant role to play in terms of national growth and development. And I am very much surprised in the sense that uh, looking at the number of months left for election to come into play, I at least expected that this magnitude of reshuffle will have taken place. Mm. One significant thing has to do with the rule and the fact that the finance minister has been relieved of his duty as a finance minister, looking at other loan concessions that we have gone into, other uh, borrowings that has been laid to ensure that Ghana is able to access that money. I was thinking that the time was too short mm -hmm. to leave him off his post. Mm -hmm. Considering the fact that the time that the economy had heated, that was the very time that most people were thinking that if the finance minister had been asked to maybe move, it would have engendered what we we'll call public confidence in our public factors and at the same time enhancing our public sector space. But unfortunately, uh, the president didn't uh, hit to the call by policy think tanks, the call by citizens of this country. But as we stand now, uh, normally when a minister is being nominated, the minister has to go through vetting. Yes. And having gone through vetting, that is when you are cleared for you to be able to start work. Yes. Looking at the number of months left, I think it's too short a time for us to be able to do that turn around, especially, especially in the case of finance ministry. Because uh, if you look at he living, it will take Parliament not up till April before these ministers be cleared for them to start job. The question is, it will stall business at these ministries, even though there are deputy ministers. But there are certain times you require the minister himself to be able to sign some of these agreements. Okay. Another difficulty that I have seen with respect to the finance ministry is of the fact that if government is going to leave, this, there should have been a pre-planned approach in dealing with this matter. Because the backbone of this economy has to do with the finance. And then the finance advices that are, are the economic indicators, uh, economic planning indicators that we expect as people. But at this very moment that they are, he's going to leave off his post, it's going to be a difficulty for us. And I think that the change that will be required by government in terms of economic development will not be seen much. Okay. Again, the gentleman that is brought there, I know him very well. I know him very well. He, he has taught me some time ago. Uh, he's definitely not into finance. He's into it even though he's an economics, but he's into energy and economics. And so I think that he'll be able to do a good job if he had enough time. But looking at the short nature of time for which he's going to go through vetting, he's going to come to get used to whatever has done in those ministries. It's going to be a difficulty for us okay. as a country. Another shocking has to do with the Ministry of Information. In the sense that Kodo Ponkuma has a way of dealing with people, yeah. especially in the media. Sometimes you know that what he's saying is not true. Yeah, of course. Yes, you still have the, that, that that argument to be able to turn around these things. Yeah. I don't know what informed the, the, that his change, that change should be done. Because the lady is a deputy to him. Mm -hmm. And we have seen the performance of the lady. We have also seen the performance of the minister. Yeah. So in these trial times that the government was going to make sure, I think they would have hold on to the Minister of uh, Information. They would have also hold on to other Ministry, which some of us think that the change will not do much. And unfortunately, it has an impact on political party voting. In the sense that if you look at loyalty mm -hmm. to leaders and then the outcome of elections, the very people that they have moved, it is going to affect the loyalty of those people who are supposed to vote for the political party. And so I think that in, in, in a whole, 
it is just some of them are window dressing because they are moved as deputy and make them substantive. Some are ministers, they move them to become ministers of other sectors. Okay. But I think that they, they could have done a lot of thinking through in order to take away some of the difficulties we face. Okay. But at the end of the day, it is someone losing his job and another person getting his job. Okay. So um, when you were talking, you made mention of uh, the finance and then the information. information. Yes. So basically, you feel those two portfolios, it wasn't really necessary. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. For me, finance minister, the call for him to go had come at a time that uh, Ghana, if he had done that, it would have engendered public confidence and international confidence on our, on our public financial space. The time that he was called, those days that he was called that he should move, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean it was incompetency or it was competency. Okay. It was about the fact that if you're leading a team and there are challenges with a the team, there are certain times the head is sacrificed so that other external and internal uh, borrowers will engender public confidence and we could have gotten a lot good deal for ourselves. Okay. For example, at the time that the finance minister was asked to go, if he had gone, they would have had a lot of benefit to the international market in terms of borrowing. There would have been a lot of international understanding from our, our, our creditors that, look, the government actually wanted to keep in things in line and make sure that at the end of the day, uh, we'll have good financial stability and financial front for a country like Ghana. But unfortunately, the president even came in public defense for the finance minister, mm. and then it never happened. Looking at just a few months to election, less than uh, 10 months, and then this reshuffle is done. And uh, this reshuffle, sometimes we said, yeah, it is statutory. So it has to go through parliamentary vetting. Mm -hmm. It has to go through all these processes before they start work. How long will the how fast would uh, uh, the, the parliament deal with this work? And I don't know that they will get what we want to get for our country. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So um, before, before I let you go, today is Valentine's Day. Uh, what is that little advice you have for the youth? Let me just use our term, Gen Z buddies. <laughs> okay. uh, normally, uh, in the past, the Valentine's Day has been misconstrued yeah. to mean a day where the youth will have intimacy with each other. The day that people will seek gifts from other, other people. I think that the time has come that as young people, we should be looking into making useful of the day. For example, if you look at Ghana, we sought to coin it as a day of chocolate day. Yeah. So rather than you go into other issues that are not morally, not right, I think that let's engender and eat more chocolate today, give out more chocolate today. Let's show some sort of even being humane to people. Okay. Because sometimes love is not just about the actual feeling, the only feelings that we have. We must be human beings to other people. And today, I, I want to see the, more of that practice for all of us. Okay, all right. So, I'll be expecting my chocolates from you because you said we should give out more chocolate. Your chocolate will come. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you too very much. So, that was Dr. Jamal, an economics and senior lecturer for Kofuridia Technical University. Follow us on our various social media handles and don't forget to subscribe to our channel at 877 KTU Radio. The name is Benedicta Yao Hinoa somewhere.